Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and as promised, today's video is a start to finish in-depth pre-sale detail on this badly neglected Skyline R34. Some of you may have seen several of my detailing guides on this car, looking at very particular areas from the engine bay detail to the door jams, cleaning scum around badges and trims, as well as a full interior detail, which I'll try and add links here if you want a more in-depth look at detailing those specific areas. Initially, I never intended on doing a full detailing vlog on this car, so I just want to make it clear that not all the footage will be in chronological order. But due to a lot of requests wanting to see this whole process from start to finish, I decided to string those shorter videos together as well as fill in some gaps with some additional footage and take you through the paint correction and protection process to make this a complete full length video that I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get to it. The first area to be treated were the wheels. I started by wetting the area to prevent any chemicals from drying or staining the surfaces and then used my tyre and wheel cleaners to pre-treat the area. After allowing the cleaners to dwell for a few minutes, I followed up with a thorough pressure rinse down to remove as much grime in a safe touchless manner. With all the looser contamination removed, it was then time for a physical clean. I started with the wheel wells and tyre walls, giving them a good scrub down with my brushes. The tyres themselves were actually brand new so they didn't need too much work but I still gave them a good once over. I then moved on to the inner wheel barrel using my stronger tar and iron wheel cleaner together with my wheel woolly brushes to attack that heavier contamination. I did end up going over the inner barrels twice as a second application was needed to get them to a cleaner state.
the wheel faces were nowhere near as bad as the inner barrels. So a nice brushing process, followed by a once over with my wheels wash mitt was more than enough to get them back to a great clean state. The last step was applying a touchless sealant to feather enhance and seal the finish. Now in a perfect world with unlimited budgets, the wheels could have benefited from being removed to gain better cleaning access as well as polishing and ceramic coating the rims. But as a pre-sale detail having to make judgement calls of where time is best spent, I think this was a great outcome that allowed me to spend more time on other vital areas that you'll see throughout this entire job. Next up was cleaning and restoring the engine bay. It's important to look at the bigger picture when detailing, and the first thing that caught my eye was the inner bonnet area that just looked awful and would greatly detract from the rest of the engine bay if not addressed. I initially started by masking the engine bay to protect it while cleaning the upper inner bonnet. Then I removed the insulated trim and some rubber moulds to be able to clean the area better. These days I trust my own judgement, meaning I make decisions on behalf of my clients and in my opinion, this cover looks awful and is not salvageable, so it should be left off or replaced. Next I applied an alkaline based degreaser and allowed it to dwell for a few minutes to start breaking down the surface grease and grime. There's decades of dirt and contamination build up here, so you need to be realistic that it's going to take a little time to remove it safely. I then used my Tornador air tool with a light degreaser solution to further inject compressed air and my chemical solution over the surface to remove as much contamination in a safe touchless manner. So right here I'm just looking to remove that first layer of looser grime so that when it comes to removing the more heavily bonded dirt and grease beneath, it's going to be a safer and more effective process. After a thorough rinse to remove the standing chemical residue and flush off that top layer of contamination, it was then time for a physical clean. My goal here is pretty consistent with all things detailing, which is a 95% plus contamination or defect free result. So try not to get too sidetracked or slowed down with chasing a 100% perfect result which realistically doesn't exist. If there's a spot or two that needs more attention, it's sometimes best to keep moving forward as you can always revisit them later on. Now just like previously cleaning the inside upper bonnet, the engine bay was also treated in much the same manner. I used the same alkaline degreaser for the initial chemical pre-treatment, allowed it to dwell and then followed up with my Tornador air tool. A 
few differences you will see here is that I'm putting clean water into a second Tornador reservoir bottle to rinse the engine bay after cleaning. This is one of the great advantages of the Tornador. It uses very little water or liquid making it fantastic and very safe for engine bay cleaning and rinsing. I've also got a couple of other longer wheel brushes to clean some of the lower and harder to access areas. As needed, I'm applying both more of my alkaline and tar cleaning chemicals, rinsing sections as I go and making sure those chemicals never completely dry on the surface. This is to avoid any potential chemical etchings that are usually a result of chemicals drying. After doing a final rinse with the Tornador, I then used a separate Tornador basic air blower to dry off the engine bay, remove the masking tape and perform the quick towel dry to soak up and level out any remaining water spots. The final step in this cleaning process was to turn the engine over and run it till operating temperature to expel and dry up any remaining trap water. Next up was polishing the inner bonnet. Car manufacturers tend to apply very little paint in areas such as these, basically to save money. You can actually see the primer through the paint which is never a good sign but honestly it's not all that uncommon. I used a super fine primer polish with a very light polishing foam pad to remove the chalky finish, restore some gloss and lay down some protection all in one step. Because detailing is all about the finer details, we can sometimes get too caught up with focusing in on one area a little too much. So every now and then, take a step back and try to assess your work more broadly. The polishing step actually did so much to rejuvenate the overall look of the engine bay, but it was only after finishing and taking a few steps back that I could really appreciate the impact that it had. Next was trying to further restore the many various trims and components within the engine bay. For certain plastic, rubber and even metal trims, a non-abrasive cleaner polish and sealant such as CarPro Essence Plus can be a great way to further deep clean and restore their finish without creating additional gloss. For the painted gloss finishes, I used the same previous primer polish to also restore gloss just like the inner bonnet area before. After giving the resins in the primer polishes time to cure and harden, the final step was applying a protective dressing to further enhance and protect the engine bay. The engine bay was divided into about a dozen areas and section by section the dressing was thoroughly massaged over all the plastics, rubbers, metals and even painted trims.
About an hour later, I used a microfiber cloth to level down the dressing, remove any high spots, and create a more factory satin finish that I personally like. There's always more that can be done given the time, budget and willpower, but I can tell you that the owner was super happy to say the least and that made all the hard work even more so rewarding. The next area to be treated were the door jams. Right here, I'm using my double action spray bottles with a dilution of an alkaline based degreaser as my pre-treatment. I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes to start lifting and softening that first layer of grime. I'm then gonna use my Tornador air tool with an even lighter concentration of my degreaser to inject compressed air and the cleaning solution over the door jams in an effort to blast away as much of that surface dirt and contamination as possible in a safe, touchless manner. Now on the lower section of the bonnet jam, I'm just using my pressure washer to blast away that surface dirt and gunk. I'm then applying my degreaser and using a small detailing brush to physically deep clean the stronger bonded contamination. I'm checking my results as I go and as there's still some stronger staining on those jam areas, I'm then using a tar remover that in my experience used after an alkaline cleaner helps remove those more stubborn stains a little better. As I've mentioned in the past, door jams typically have very little paint or clear coat applied. So correcting them like you would car paint is generally off the table. But a super light polish with a non-aggressive pad will be safe and will help restore some gloss and clarity and even more so, further help deep clean them to remove some staining or blemishes that cleaning chemicals alone can't always remove. In this case, I use the primer polish that'll polish and protect the paint in a single step with a gentle polishing foam pad. Technique wise, I'm only using light to moderate pressure and moving quickly to be in line with a gentle technique. We'll have a look at the door jams in the final footage, but I think this final polishing step really helped to further clean, brighten and just crisp up their look to make them really pop in the end. So 
So onto the interior cleaning and rejuvenation process. I personally like to start with the mats because they're usually one of the dirtiest trims and as I'll be extracting them I also want to give them a little time to dry before placing them back into the car. Now I'm using my air compressor with a Tornador basic blower to quickly blast the dirt and particles off the mats that for me works fantastically. It also tends to work a little better at removing things like pet hair and sand but you can obviously just use a good vacuum cleaner instead. As anyone who's dealt with cleaning pet hair knows, <laughs> it's a nightmare to remove. So I'm also using a rubber tipped tool to help aid this process. Next up was giving the mats a chemical pretreatment using an interior cleaner to break down the surface grime prior to extracting them. I'll spot treat any obvious stains I see but also give the entire mat a good scrub down. For the higher quality carpet mats, I'm using a stiffer carpet and upholstery brush to get a little deeper into those fibers. At this stage, I'm ready to use my extractor to inject hot water into the carpet to expand the fibers and allow both the dirt and cleaning liquids to be sucked out. I'm using moderate pressure and moving fairly slowly and I'll go over each mat several times and look for the clear liquid being drawn up as a sign the mats are clean. Next up was the primary dry cleaning stage of the car's interior. In this process my goal is once again to remove at least 95% of the existing looser dirt, dust and any particles. I'll be using my vacuum, my pet hair removal tool, a gentle dusting brush and even a blower at times working in a general top to bottom manner throughout the cabin. The main thing to appreciate why this process is so vital to get right, apart from the obvious cleaning result, is that dust, dirt and particles create an abrasive-like muddy consistency when mixed with cleaning liquids. So if you start spraying on your interior cleaners and scrubbing the surfaces with all that dirt and dust in place, it tends to lightly scuff the materials and trims. And over time, when repeated, this is at least a contributing factor to interior trims looking hazed, weathered and prematurely aged. You wouldn't or at least shouldn't hand wash your car until you've firstly rinsed off the looser dirt because it swells, scuffs and ages the look of your paint and trims. The same goes for the interior. You should firstly dust and vacuum up that looser dirt before you start your physical wet cleaning stage.
Next up was doing a few wet cleaning test sections. Every car, its materials and the existing grime is different. So doing a little testing to confirm that your interior cleaner tools and techniques are going to work safely and effectively will in most cases provide you with great information to move more quickly with better confidence. The driver's armrest is typically a fairly grimy area so it should be a great test. I'm using the same interior cleaner I used on the mats but with a small, slightly stiff detailing brush and I'm spending a good minute working the cleaner in very well. I'll then use my extractor in the exact same way I described for cleaning the car mats. Hopefully you guys can see it's a great result as all that yellow scum staining is gone and the cloth material has really come back to a nice vibrant finish. And what's more, I didn't need to use any more aggressive chemicals or tools so I really couldn't be more happy. On this upper door area which is also commonly used as an armrest, I'm pretty much using the exact same method with the only difference being that I'm using a slightly more gentle brush and obviously not using my extractor as it's a non-porous vinyl surface. I know it's a little harder to see the difference here, but with the bonded contamination removed, the trim is darker, less shiny, and has that more factory-like new, richer appearance. So once again, this is a great result. Now this seat has a number of stains that look like they've been there for quite some time. I can also see that the fabric is a little worn in certain areas so I need to find a good balance of being safe but still effective. I'm spraying the cleaner on quite liberally and then using my non-scratch interior cleaning glove to work the area well and then repeat the process to hopefully break down those surface stains. I then grabbed my extractor and spent a good couple of minutes getting a decent amount of hot water right into the seat and pulling it back up and out several times. Now those original stains were removed successfully. However, it appeared that a new stain had surfaced which is something I've had happen a few times in the past. This is the time to do a little troubleshooting. So I went through the motions of more intensively treating that area with my cleaner and detailing brush and I even used my steamer to spot treat the area even further. Now in the moment this didn't remove the stain. But I'll show you in a bit that after I cleaned the whole seat and allowed it to fully dry overnight, the stains did go away. Those stains ended up being oil, potentially from a bottle of clean engine oil spilling into that seat, where it's probably been sitting there for years. I actually checked and there was also some oil residue on the carpet directly under the seat. Now as I mentioned earlier, I've been here before and you can clean and extract that oil till the cows come home, but it won't go away in the moment. Just make sure you degrease the surface well, as I did, and allow it to fully dry and it shouldn't resurface even when pushing down or sitting back on the seat. So if you're faced with a similar issue, I hope this helps some of you out. Once I was happy with the results of my cleaning tests, and had a pretty good idea of what it was going to take to get this interior nice and clean, it was then time to get down to business. This whole wet cleaning process was all about stripping back and removing years if not decades of embedded grime. All the hard surfaces were cleaned using a combination of brushes, non-scratch cleaning pads and gloves, 
and even my steamer around certain intricate areas to try and get them to a great clean and decontaminated level. The fabrics and carpets were given a further extraction stage to help draw out the deeper grime and even some spot steam cleaning in certain areas where it was difficult to get my extractor in. In every detailing job or process I perform, there's always three main objectives I follow. First is to be safe, meaning I'm not damaging the vehicle or its surfaces. Second is being effective, meaning I'm producing a great result. And thirdly is being efficient, meaning I'm moving as quickly as I can, but importantly not sacrificing the first two objectives of being safe and effective in pursuit of being efficient. This is always an ongoing balancing act as unlike my own car that I've cleaned hundreds of times and I know back to front as well as what my goals are, as a professional detailer, every new job is a different car with different materials, varying levels of grime and even different levels of services to suit many budgets and varying goals. the glass mirrors and clear plastics were the next area to be cleaned. I applied my glass cleaner either directly on the surface or on my cloths depending on the area, used the first glass cloth to work the cleaner in well and a second zero linting cloth for the final streak free wipe.
The final step in this whole process was applying a protective and enhancing interior dressing. I once again started by doing a test spot to make sure my dressing of choice and application method would work well on this vehicle. The product was applied liberally using a hand applicator, allowed to sit and bond for a few minutes and then leveled down with a cloth. I really love 303 Aerospace Protectant. I've used it forever, it's super easy to apply, non-glossy but nicely rich creating a beautiful like new factory finish and really does seem to protect well from UV rays and be quite affordable so what's really not to love? I applied it to about half of the interior's plastics, vinyls and rubbers before coming back and leveling it down and then I did the same for the remaining second half. So after treating the wheels, detailing the engine bay, giving the door jams the clean of their life and completing all the interior work, it was finally time to wash the car and give all the exterior paint and trims a great strip down decontamination process. I started by using a fallout and traffic film remover as a pre-treatment to begin dissolving, loosening and softening the surface grime. After the chemical was allowed to dwell for 5-10 to 10 minutes, I then used an alkaline based car wash detergent foamed directly over the pre-treatment chemical and allowed them both to dwell for a further 5-10 to 10 minutes before giving the entire vehicle an extremely thorough top to bottom pressure rinse down. Next up was giving the vehicle a hand wash. For this I used an acid based wash detergent with a couple of microfiber mitts to continue the strip down process in getting the paint and trims back to a clean bare state.
Now, around some of the trims and badges, there was some extremely stubborn grime, so I'll walk you through the process I used to remove it. You want to start with an alkaline based or purpose cleaner or degrees of dilution, spray it on nice and generously and give it a minute or two to start softening the grime. Spray some of the chemical directly onto a detailing brush and then use it to agitate the area, just using moderate pressure to encourage that baked on scum to loosen, lift and come off. After brushing for 30 seconds or so, rinse the area down to remove the lifted dirt and to better evaluate your progress. I can see around this badge that I've removed about 80% of that original contamination. And to try and get that last more stubborn 20%, I'm going to switch to a tar remover that should be a little more effective at removing it. I'll once again spray it on, give it a moment to dwell, and then once again use my detailing brush to agitate the area before rinsing it down again. Hopefully you guys can see that almost all that contamination has been removed. There's just a few specks left behind where a clay bar should remove them and a bit of light oxidation and surface rust on the badge that a car polish should also clean up quite well. Now sometimes the grime will come off easier than other times, so you may need to repeat the process one or two more times to get there in the end. And like I also mentioned before, a clay bar and just some car polish at the tip of a cloth can further clean and restore the areas if you want to go a little deeper into finishing them. The next decontamination stage was a claim process to pick up that last amount of remaining fallout and strongly bonded particles that chemicals on their own don't tend to remove. I used a clay lubricant with a clay towel, working section by section, just using light pressure and short back and forth motions to remove that final contamination. Last step here was giving the exhaust tips a nice dip clean with a metal polishing soap. Nice. 
After that, the car was given a final pressure rinse down, followed by a towel dry and then a blow dry to expel the remaining water. The final preparation step prior to paint correction was an IPA wipe down to remove any streaks or chemical residue. With the paint and trims completely clean and bare, this is the time we can truly assess the vehicle's condition. Now it's fair to say the paint has seen better days, being completely covered with swirls, as well as moderate and deeper scratches throughout. Apart from that, there's certainly a number of water etchings, dullness in the black and clear plastics, and a hazed and oxidized finish with a real lack of gloss and clarity. There's also some clear coat failure on the rear fender, some paint transfer marks, chips, holograms and deeper staining of the paint and trims throughout. In other words, every conceivable paint defect is present on this car. But the upside is that when the finish on a car is this bad, there's only one way to go, which is way, way up. I also took a few paint thickness readings and as predicted the paint was quite thin averaging around 80 to 90 microns, meaning that anything but a light polish is definitely off the table due to having so little clear coat to play with. I also discovered that the rear fender that has clear coat failure is a repainted panel that unfortunately wasn't prepared and repainted to the best level. So on to doing a test section to discover the best compound and pad combination to restore the paint. My starting point was using a very light primer polish with an equally light foam polishing pad. I used just a couple of drops of compound on my pad, used light pressure and a fairly short polishing cycle on a mid machine speed with my dual action polisher. In other words, this is just about as light a combination and technique that can be used to machine polish car paint. Looking at the results, I'd say I removed about 50% of the defects, but also importantly, the gloss and clarity was greatly improved. So although I still need to achieve a better cut level, the finish itself is quite fantastic. For a second test section, I stuck with the same primer polish, but this time used it with a slightly more capable light cutting foam pad. Additionally, I used a little more compound on my pad, switched to a slightly higher machine speed, used a touch more pressure and polished for a little longer. In other words, I went from using this primer polish in the most gentle manner to now using it a little more aggressively to hopefully extract more cut. Looking at the results, I can immediately see it's a much better outcome. The defect removal is at least 80% plus and the gloss and clarity is really fantastic.
So comparing the original state of the paint to these two test sections, I'm more than happy to proceed with the second test section results as my product and technique combination. I always like to double check my results before proceeding so I performed another test section on a different panel and it was great to see an identical outcome. The other thing to take note of here is that apart from the swirls and scratches, this paint and many of the trims have embedded staining in the form of streaks, oxidation and even dirt and contamination that's fused to the top layer of the surfaces. It gives this originally beautiful white paint a dirty greyish and brown tinge that normal cleaning just can't remove. This is the added benefit and power of using a light polishing abrasive. It's able to shed that top, dull and dirty layer of paint to reveal such a clean and revived original paint finish hiding below. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't intend on doing a full vlog on this car, so the footage here is limited to mostly a bunch of 50-50 before and afters but hopefully that will allow you guys to see the results that were achieved. Being a pre-sale detail, it certainly wasn't a full-blown high-end paint correction process, also considering that the paint was just too thin to pursue that level. But in terms of massively improving the finish and greatly boosting gloss and clarity levels, it was certainly an outcome I feel was really successful. The glass was an area on its own that required quite a bit of work. There was lots of scum staining residue around the edges that took a bit of time to remove using both my compounds and even some shaped razor blades to remove it. while the rest of the glass greatly benefited from a deep polish to remove some etchings and restore its shine and clarity. Well 
The final step on this entire pre-sale detail was further protecting and enhancing the finish. Now the primer polish I used to correct the paint also leaves behind a protective paint and enhancing sealant. But I wanted to help boost the finish even further as well as give it a little more durability. So as my last step product, I gave the entire vehicle a layer of Nova Boost V2 that in my experience should give the paint and trims a little extra saturation, gloss, self-cleaning and environmental protection moving forward. It was sprayed directly onto the surface, wiped in with a primary towel and buffed streak free with a secondary towel all over the vehicle section by section. Well, that's about it guys. This was the largest pre-sale detail I've done to date, as this car just needed so much work to get it to a presentable state. But as this Skyline has more than doubled in value since the owner bought it, as well as being one of the extremely hard to find R34s that's still pretty much all original, there was a little more wiggle room to put that extra time and money into restoring it back to a factory-like new state. Initially, I estimated about 25 hours for this job, but in the end, I think I put about 40 hours into it, though I will say I was really happy with the result and the owner was absolutely over the moon, which is always so nice to get that reaction. I'll leave you with the final shots and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad in which I'll have a link to in the description box or you can now hit the thanks button below the video and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video helpful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. Oh wow, that's amazing. It looks brand new. <laughs> But yeah, oh my god, mate, this is incredible. Just so much like shine on it, just that's amazing. Oh my god, looks like it's never been turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Almost gone on private, you know what I mean? That's why my god, it's kind of so great, mate. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, so happy with this, man. Oh, it's great, great to hear. So we hang on 
to hold my fingers, try to guess what tomorrow brings. But as it poured from Chicago, we used to say, "Oh, carpe diem," which means seize the day. 'Cause if you think you know what is in store. Hold on tight, you have for some fun. And if you think you know what fades in store, embrace yourself for change. 'Cause who you are was never set in stone, and when things go down, with a magic of their own. Life has its way to drop you from the clouds.